Hi, I'm Laura Hughes, an application engineer with Arrow.com, and today I want to walk you through getting started with your BeagleBone Blue. You've seen a little bit of information about it already, how it's fantastic for robotics projects, but it does have a couple of differences from the BeagleBone Black, so even if you set that one up, it couldn't hurt to watch this to get started. We have a quick start guide in just about every language you could possibly want, and the board itself. I've already cut this open. So, this is what the board looks like. And the instructions you're given are connect the USB cable, connect the other end of the USB cable, and then click start.htm. So, we're gonna do a little bit more in depth than that. This um, board does have two antennas for the Wi Fi and Bluetooth chip. Go ahead and gently bend those out because they start out on top of the board. They should still work if they're on top of the board, but I like to go ahead and get them out. They are technically detachable UFL connectors, so if one pops off, just very carefully put that back on. You see a couple of power options for this board. So we've got the 12 volt DC jack here. It can actually take, I believe, between nine and 18 volts. And then we also have a space to use a LiPo battery. What we're going to use first is right down here, the micro USB connector. Now, everything robotics related, the drivers for the motors and all that, actually only want to see six volts and above. So when we're tethered to the computer, which runs at five volts, we're not going to be able to use those features. But we can get into the code a little bit, look at the LEDs blinking, and you'll see where to go from there. So I will follow the first two steps, plug a USB cable into my computer, and then into the BeagleBone Blue. This cord does not come with the board, but uh, very standard, and we have a couple online if you do need to purchase one. Okay, so the first thing that we're supposed to do is go online and go to beaglebone.org slash blue. On this page, you see all the information about the peripherals that you have um, access to here, and there's also a getting started button. Click on that, and you'll see plug your USB BeagleBone in. We have done that, step one, down. Now, the next step is to go download some of these drivers. I'm using Windows 10 and it's 64-bit, so I downloaded those drivers and just go ahead and open it to install them. Mine goes pretty quickly because I've actually already installed these drivers. I was playing with this beforehand. Yours will take a little bit longer. Be patient, let those drivers get installed. Once they're done, you will see a ready for operation message. The next step is to browse to your BeagleBone. It's actually running a web server on here and you're connected through the USB. We're not ready to SSH in just yet. You access that by just clicking on the link provided in the BeagleBone Getting Started Guide. It takes you to the IP address and you should see green messaging up top about your BeagleBone being connected. If you still see an orange bar saying, enter the IP address of your BeagleBone, you're not quite doing it right. This is where things really start to deviate from the BeagleBone Black. All of the example code below the screen box isn't actually going to run properly on your, on your BeagleBone Blue. And it won't tell you that outright, it just will not let anything happen. So what we need to do is go to Cloud9, which is an IDE that lets you interface with this um, through the Bash shell, and start programming on our own. So open a new tab and go to your local BeagleBone. If you need to go to Cloud9, there's a link on that Getting Started page. Open a new terminal window on this board by clicking on the plus sign and selecting New Terminal Window. You will see that you are in the Cloud9 directory, and this is perfectly fine, but if you do import any of the code from the Getting Started page on the BeagleBone Black, it's not going to run, and you get error messages that show you that the LEDs aren't quite mapped the same way. There's just a lot of things that might be a little bit different. You have to remember that this board is basically a BeagleBone with a cape on it. They've just heavily integrated it so you don't need two pieces of hardware. So what we really need to do is get this connected to the internet so that we can use AppGet to update Robotics Cape. It's a package that will give us everything we actually need. So, apparently this is really easy for people that are actually fluent in Linux. I am not, so I'm gonna walk you through every step because I actually struggled with this. So, I like to check where I am, so I, I listed everything in my directory. I'm going to go ahead and use conman to connect to the internet. So the command there is conman ctl, conman control, and you will see that pop up. You are now in that program. The first step is to enable Wi-Fi. 
then you need to tether Wi-Fi disable. Both of these should already be set up so you get kind of sassy messages about no, but just type them anyways, this is important. Then scan for Wi-Fi networks and type services to actually display those networks that you have access to. In the next step, you will need to enter that entire Wi-Fi underscore gibberish situation, but it will stay on your screen, so don't worry too hard. But be aware of which one you actually need to connect to. Once you've found what you need, type agent on to get ready to set up. Once agent is on, type connect and then Wi-Fi underscore everything that you see above. If you use tab, it'll auto-populate until the next step where something is different from anything else in the list. That makes it much faster. Hit enter and if this is a password protected network, it will ask you for the password. I've already connected to this one, so it already knows it, but it would just be another field. You would see another couple lines populate here. You are now connected to the internet, we think, so type quit to get out of con man. Then you can test your Wi-Fi settings by using ifconfig and pinging something like google.com just to make sure you're actually getting wireless information. After a couple of pings, hit control C to break that cycle and you're back in bash. Once you see your root at BeagleBone again, go ahead and finally use sudo apt-get, update everything. Upgrade everything. <laughs> this is going to take quite a while the first time you power up your board, but everything is changing so quickly that I really find it best to go ahead and update everything. What we really need for the next steps are the Git package and um, the Robotics Cape package, but we really just want everything to be up to date. Go ahead and do it. Once everything is fully updated, fully upgraded, you've installed, you rebooted, you're really ready to go. So what we need to do is create or move into a directory that we're going to use as sort of a sandbox to play with some of this example code that comes with Robotics Cape. I've gone ahead and created Laura Sand, my little sandbox, so I cd into that. I can't explain this. Again, I am not a Linux whiz, but when I tried to install, or when I tried to use git to clone into the root directory, it gave me an error. So that's why I made a sandbox. It worked like that. I don't know why, if you know, please leave me a comment and tell me why that would have happened. Now what we're going to do is pull all of the example code from the integrated robotic cape into our directory. This is going to be pulled from Strassen Design's GitHub repository. There are some tutorials out there that imply all these files should already be there once the package updates, but mine weren't. So we're just gonna go clone it, pull it into somewhere we know, and work from there. In a new tab, go over to github.com slash Design and click on the Robotics Cape installer. Using the green clone or download button, copy the link in the box and then go back over to your Cloud9 window. The command you need to use is just git clone and then control V, paste in that link. That will pull that entire file structure into your BeagleBone. Now, once you're in that sandbox, if you type ls to show all your files, you see a new file. You see the robotics cape. Now, go into that using change directory and look at the files, and we want to go into examples. Look at all these examples. This is where things finally start to get fun. We can really start trying all of these out. Now remember what I said about the robotics functions not necessarily being available until you plug in a um, power source at least six volts. So all we're going to do right now is work with Blinky because hey, we've got some LEDs here. Let's see what they do. So let's get started with the Blinky example. The BeagleBone has two user LEDs. The blue ones that you see here, 0, 1, 2, 3, are actually not really something you can control. I mean, I'm sure you can, but they're not what this app controls. We're going to be controlling the red and green LEDs that you can see blinking here cheerfully already. That's because I actually set up Blink to run on startup just to make sure I knew what code was on there. So, this program blinks those and also gives you the cool factor of being able to change the frequency of the blinking with one of the buttons. So if I push the mode button, labeled MOD, we see the blinking start to get faster. Push it again. Hyperdrive LED. And we're back because we only have three modes. But it's working, that's fantastic. We are clearly communicating with the BeagleBone. We clearly have working code and that's all we could really ask for. So I'm going to break out of that by long holding the pause button, which is labeled PAU. 
and you see those lights stop. Now we just have some activity lights in the blue 0123 buttons. So there we go. We're blinking LEDs. I think we've officially gotten started. As always, if this was helpful, please subscribe. And if you make anything cool with the Beagle Bone Blue, we would love to see it. Thanks for watching.